Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church, the only Lutheran church open in 12 counties today. We welcome all those who are visiting us, and we hope you have a very meaningful and spirit-filled worship with us. All you will need for worship is in your bulletin, and the hymns will be either in the green hymn book in your pew, or in the blue with one voice. We are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. All are invited to participate in the sacrament. If you do not wish to receive the sacrament, you may still come forward for a blessing. Since we are living in different times, this past week has really been interesting. I feel that as a pastor, we need to address a few things in regards to the virus outbreak and how the church and also the Lutheran Church at large has been handling it. We have been in contact with our fellow colleague pastors in our conference, and we have also been in contact and in conference with our bishop, Matthew Regal, who has outlined some things for us and for some guidelines for us. Bishop Regal does not have the authority to impose a closing of churches. That is left up to us as a congregation. If the congregation feels about canceling church service, that will be up to you. But as for the bishop, he has no authority, he says, to just blanket close any churches. Number two, we have made some minor adjustments to our service in which we will start implementing immediately for our greeters, there is no handshaking anymore. We will just hand the bulletin. There is hand sanitizer out in the narthex, a big jug of it. We might have to chain it fast to the table, but there's a big jug of it. <laughs> During the passing of the peace, we will not move out of our seats. We will just have the peace, and we will continue. During communion, we have hand sanitizers here for the assistants and for the pastor during the communion. I will be dropping the wafer into your hand. I will not physically touch people's hands. That's just a little minor difference. I will not actually physically touch people's hands. Those are basically the minor adjustments we need to do to ensure safety and also, for our community to let you know, the hospital is on enforced lockdown. The nursing home is on enforced lockdown. Starting tomorrow, there's only one entrance to the hospital that will be open. And you must go in and answer a few questions. But unless you are a spouse or power of attorney, you will not be allowed back in the patient wings. And same way at the nursing home. Pastors are not even allowed to be in there unless they are called in by the family member of a hospital for an end-of-life emergency. Lenten luncheons are postponed indefinitely on Wednesday at noon. There will be no more Lenten luncheons in the Presbyterian Church. We need to decide about our Lenten suppers on Thursday evenings. We have our men's breakfast on Saturday, which we will determine and decide among ourselves whether to have that this Saturday. Our workshop yesterday, unfortunately, was canceled by the Wheeling, West Virginia presenters. They called me Friday afternoon and said they were not coming because one of their presenters was out of state where they were in contact with somebody with the virus. So we had to cancel it because we could not guarantee the safety of the people coming into our workshop. Any questions? This is not a time to fear. This is not a time to panic. Amen. This is a time where we come together as a congregation and as a community to love and support one another and especially for those who are most vulnerable. We help each other out of love and not out of fear or panic of somebody else. 
If you feel that someone needs to be, I will not do visitations either. We will be told, we were told to do phone calls. So I'm doing a lot of phone calling the last few days. But they've read, they said that we should not do visitations. Phone calling is better. Is there any questions? It's not that hard, but we do these things out of love. I'd love to continue having worship service because I think it's important for us to be together and worship with one another, to give thanks to God still for the blessings that we have, even in the midst of the uncertainty of crisis. For those who have not heard, today is a national day of prayer. Our president has asked all churches to come together in prayer for this crisis. If there are no further questions, I would like to lead us in prayer for this. Are there any questions? Yes? I just want to let the men know that we are having men's breakfast next Saturday. And if you don't want to come, that's fine. That we are? Yeah, there will be food. There will be men's breakfast this Saturday then at 830. Any other questions, concerns? Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, you are the author of all life. Through your Holy Spirit, you have created all things of creation, and for this we give thanks. Now, O oh Lord, in this time of uncertainty, let us not be ruled by fear, but instead let us live our lives in love towards the neighbor and to one another. Give us the courage and strength, O oh God, to support one another and to be the hands and the heart and the feet of you, O oh Lord. Lord, be with our country. Be with those around the world who are suffering from this. Be especially with all our doctors, all our nurses, caretakers, family members who are on the front lines of this crisis. Be with all those that serve in our military forces, our National Guard and the disaster response teams. Be with our pharmaceuticals and all those who do research who are diligently trying to find cures and other methods. Lord, we ask for your grace upon our country and around the world. For it is you who are the rock of our salvation. It is you who see us and protect and guide us. And where there is fear, Lord, bring love. Where there is uncertainty, bring peace. And where there is doubt, may your face shine with the brilliance of your glory upon us, so that we know it is you, O Lord, who are in control of all things. In this we pray in Jesus Christ, your holy Savior, most precious name. Amen. Amen. Any announcement I missed? <laughs> One announcement I forgot. You see the camera? <laughs> Thanks to technology, we are recording this service live, and we are going to live stream it over the internet for people to watch later through our website. And hopefully we will live stream service directly as it happens once I get the technology completely ironed out. So smile and wave for the camera sometime. <laughs> Pastor, yes. that camera creates a block of communion. People are going to have to go back the way they came. I can't get through here. We'll have to move it. Yeah, I know I'm blocking it. Yeah. So just use the other aisle. Go the other way. This side goes that way. <laughs> go that way. Like I said, it's a technology in progress. <laughs> With that, then, let us come together in hearts and minds. And those who are able, let us stand for our brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is person, 
who gives life and who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us two hearts and right spirits, that we may find the pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Sisters and brothers, receive the good news that God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Our opening hymn is in your green hymn book, number 385, What Wondrous Love Is This? of the 
church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Enemies, 
we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, we will be saved by His life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here ends the reading.
Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more to come the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see the fields ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap, for that which you did not labor, others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Well, many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He had told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed him that was his work. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of our Lord. thirsty. 
Water is a very important part of who we are in our life. And the people were afraid because there was no water. There was no water for all of their livestock. Think about this. How many people were on the journey from Exodus? How many people? Almost a half a million people. How many cattle do you think were with them? Animals. Think how much water that takes. During the Civil War, Fort Mulligan up here was a supply depot. And if you read some of their records of how much they had in storage, especially forage for animals, to feed a regular army of animals almost takes 200 tons of forage a day to feed animals. That's not including the people. So think of how much water it would have took to feed all these people and their animals. They were crying to Moses. They were saying, why did you bring us out here? They were fearful of this here. They did not remember that God provided for them at the Red Sea. They did not remember that God provided them meat and quails and bread. They did not remember what God had done for them. All they could see was the fear in front of them. Their own need. Not the needs of maybe their neighbor. But God didn't punish them for that. Once again, he provided Gave them water. When we suffer fear in our lives, we tend to turn inward and look inward within us. We tend to think of self-preservation. And this is what sin does. Sin in our life causes us to turn and look inward to what we need. Not what our neighbor needs. And so as we look at our gospel with the woman at the well, this woman was a Samaritan, an outsider. Jews and Samaritans had nothing to do with each other. They were shunned. She came to draw water at noontime, the hottest part of the day, which meant that she was fearful for coming during the dawn or during the evening. She might have been harassed by the other people. We don't know that. But the fact that she came at noontime means that she was not wanting to come when other people were there. She also was ostracized because of her situation. She said she had five husbands, and the fifth one was not her own. She was in fear from other people doubting her situation. She was afraid to live in the world that she was. Until Jesus told her, if you knew what I could give you, you would never be in fear anymore. All of us who come to Jesus, all of us in the scriptures that we see when we come to Jesus, we are changed. No longer do we fear the unknown. Jesus Christ gives us the spirit of not to fall back into fear, as St. Paul said, but instead we live in courage because we know that we have faith in the one who takes care of us. No longer are we in fear from what we don't know. But instead we do know what we believe as Jesus said. For salvation is through Jesus Christ and no one else. Therefore we do not need to live in fear. What I said about with the quails and the manna. Think about today. 
We are living in a time of crisis and fear. You cannot help but listen to people that are in panic. What do we see when we go into our store shelves? Stripped bare. And yet today I even heard people now are saying in the media, you better stock up on your medicines, better stock up on this and on that. Self-induced fear again. When the Israelites tried that with the manna and the quail, God told them only to take what they needed. And they didn't. They hoarded it. It all spoiled. Why did it spoil? Because God told them to take only what was needed. And as we look, that explains because God wanted the people to share among the others. Instead of looking inward and hoarding it for yourself, to go out and share it among others, to make sure that others have. Think about our situation today. If we only took what we needed and shared with others, Maybe there wouldn't be so much of a fear. Maybe there wouldn't be such a panic if we actually looked out for the welfare of our brother and sister instead of hoarding it for ourselves. But that means that we need to trust in God. Trust. As the woman said, I know that the Christ is coming. And Jesus said, I am he whom you are speaking to. Sisters and brothers, don't live in fear. Live instead in the promise and the trust of Jesus Christ, who is here among us even now and today, saying to not look within yourself, but to be giving to those others. For as you do to the least of these, Jesus said, you're doing it to me. Amen. Our hymn of the day is in our green hymn book, number 356. Those who are able, let us stand. <laughs>
And now let us confess the faith of the church by use of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate and virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with his scripture. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Turning now our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, who pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. In need. God of living water, send your church beyond boundaries to proclaim your grace. May its witness be a source of refreshment for thirsty souls. Strengthen our voices that all people can know and believe that Jesus is truly the Savior of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, protect from pollution or a misuse of all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams. Bless the work of those who dig wells and those who advocate for access to clean water, that all people and animals have enough to drink. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, open the hearts of leaders and authorities that they hear the cries of the suffering and act with compassion towards them. Bring peace to dispute lands and bring reconciliation to people divided by race, culture, and or nationality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of living water, mend the hearts of those who grieve broken relationships, whether by conflict, abuse, divorce, or death. Draw near to all who are ill. We pray especially for Derek, Allen, Tyler, Maxine, Joe, Addie, Larry, Sandy, Dorothy, Den, Betty, Emily, Ruth, Linda, Priscilla, Clayton, Janet, Arlie, Carolyn, Donnie, Bernadine, Daryl, David, Maxine, Virginia, Charles, Becca, Joan and Jean, D, James, Galen. We also pray for our friends and family. Assure those questioning your presence in the midst of death or suffering. Hear us, O oh God. God of living water, renew us in the promises of baptism. Join us together in worship, fellowship, and sharing your good news. Embolden us to serve others and to work for justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. We also pray for military personnel here and abroad. We especially pray for Chip, Eric, Frank, Timothy, Kirsten, Brent, and Jan. Hear us, O oh God. God of living water, we thank you for those who endured suffering and who now boast in the glory of God. Pour your Holy Spirit into our hearts and give us peace as we live in the hope of our salvation. Hear us, O oh God. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these in all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us have a seat. <laughs>
We will now take our offering at this time. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Behold, the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for the banquet is ready. You may be seated. All baptized Christians are invited to come forward for communion. There are gluten-free wafers available for those who so desire gluten-free. We also have grape juice in the trays for those who desire grape juice. Follow the usher's directions in coming forward to receive the host, and then for the cup, either grape juice or wine, and then go back around. Unfortunately, I've got that side blocked, so we'll have to work our way back around this way. Come for all things are ready. Emily.
Let us stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. to conform our lives to him. 